This Friday through Sunday, an interesting new event takes place at Balls Falls. It's called Reawakening All Our Relations. It's a partnership between the NPCA, Indigenous Arts Organization, Kekakalanix, and the Niagara Folk Arts Multicultural Center. Emily Kovacs from the Folk Arts joins us. Emily, how did this event come about? It's fascinating. It's actually um, the brainchild of our festival producer as well as NPCA and, and the brilliant uh, Michelle Elliott Burnett, who's from Cafe Kalanix herself. Um, we wanted to create something that's inclusive but also immersive. Uh, if you can imagine newcomers and refugees who come to Canada, they don't necessarily get an exposure to Indigenous culture. And we wanted to do it in a way that's experiential um, and also celebratory, not necessarily uh, from a pain perspective. Um, so, so, you know, with get, having those things in mind, um, this weekend event came, came about. Uh, we wanted to do it actually before COVID, but of course, uh, because of it, everything got delayed. And we're really super excited that it's finally taking place this weekend. This is really a new venture for folk arts, because when, when I think of folk arts, you mentioned the word newcomers, and I think we usually think of newcomers. We think of people trying to, you know, make their way, not necessarily assimilating, but fitting in to Canadian society from another country. But really, when you want to talk about multiculturalism, our Indigenous people are part of that multicultural aspect. Yes, and I think a different way to look at it is, I, I like to think of all of us as migrants. Whether you're an immigrant who's coming in, or whether you're a migrant who are part of the Indigenous community, or whether you're a Canadian who's migrating from a young age to an old age, we're all migrants in some ways. Um, and I think for us it's very important to understand what that migration journey looks like. So folk arts is well known for two different distinct things. You either know us because we serve newcomers or refugees, or you either know us because you've come to the festival. We wanted to make sure that we bridge our past with our, our future, and we wanted to create opportunities where those two things coexist. So we don't longer have a three-week event of the festival that happens you know, usually in May or June of every year. We, we wanted to have smaller intimate events that are actually teaching focused that happen throughout the year. So you see this is part of a folk arts festival, but it's also merging our programming with newcomers and, and uh, immigrants, and also talking about very critical and difficult subjects such as uh, honoring our indigenous history. And we cannot honor our indigenous history ourselves. We have to invite the people who have hosted us first. And this is why we have partnered with Kekekalanix as well as the NPCA, because uh, nature and uh, you know the conservation goes hand in hand with indigenous culture. They know it best. So what better way to learn than to actually be immersed in a place such as the NPCA and invite newcomers to actually take part understand what a fire looks like, understand what uh, teachings of indigenous elders looks like, how to make, um, you know, what, what is the understanding between lacrosse and how to make lacrosse sticks, and really how to uh, honor uh, the traditions of the indigenous people, and how do we become responsible citizens to take care of not only ourselves, but our, you know, our human nature and everything that's around us. You're using quite a bit of the grounds at Balls Falls. There's a trail walk with Indigenous elders? Yes, there is. So there's there's actually four events uh, that happen over three days. The first one is, uh, they call it a 360 nature walk, where uh, elders walk in parallel in a two-row uh, parallel, co parallel conversation, teaching about uh, what it means. Is this uh, to related walk. to the two row wampum as well? Uh, this, it's part of it. Yes. Um, and then there's also uh, the same night, there will be uh, a clean fire ceremony. It's uh, uh, slightly different from a ceremonial fire because we're not going to have the fire happen uh, to be lit all throughout all the three days. Um, and, you know, it has very specific. Uh, uh, rituals attached to it so we don't have the people power to continue the, the fire throughout the weekend but we're going to be opening and closing with fires each time and then the following day we're going to make uh, from two to three and then I believe from five uh, three to five uh, two separate s workshops on lacrosse sticks and, and actually play the game. This sounds fantastic. So they're going to actually string a lacrosse stick? Yes. And then learn about how to play the game? Yes, and, and you know, the, and the, the meaning significance behind of it. it. 
Absolutely, and we tried it um, in the summertime and, and was very well uh, loved, so we're bringing it back again. So this is the second time um, newcomer kids and their families get a, an exposure to it. And then the same night on Saturday night from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, a smaller event for up to 50 people, there will be have they, they will have stories by the fire, again, told by indigenous elders. And then the following day, which is a Sunday, again, from 6 to 8 p.m., there will be another fire ceremony and, and individuals and their families and members of the Niagara uh, community are also welcome. So it's not uh, directly or just exclusively open for newcomers or indigenous folk. It's actually open to anyone in Niagara. Pre-registration is needed for this. How has it gone so far? Have people been signing up? Yes, actually it's going really well. So the events are $25 per ticket. Uh, and if you bundle up, you can buy three events for $60. So there's your savings uh, program. And all of the funds and the money are going directly between NPC and us to cover the cost. So this is really about fundraising to make sure that we have continuous education for our indigenous um, uh, commitments within our strategic plan. And we're also working hard with our funders to continue to ask for this on an ongoing basis because we believe that this should happen on it all the time and not just a one-off. Is this happening in other areas other than Niagara, these kinds of partnerships? The only other uh, indigenous and immigrant uh, uh, exhibit that I have heard of uh, was in, is in Winnipeg. There are a few few initiatives that are happening that are immigrant and indigenous focused, but not using the arts. It's more, uh, you know, sort of classroom based uh, lecture. So so there's none of, uh, not art, no artistic base that that we are aware of in Niagara or in Ontario or anywhere in Canada. And Niagara is really becoming a leader in these partnerships in these efforts at collaboration. I think so, and I think, again, the importance is to take a strength-based approach, not a pain. Obviously, there's a lot of pain and, and suffering when we think about indigenous, um, the Indigenous community, and, of course, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has highlighted that. I think it's really important to start with inviting the community in first and being honest and comfortable with having uncomfortable conversation, but it ha but, but should be strength-based. And when you listen to indigen Indigenous people, they also would like to know that they're just as resilient, uh, you know, as, as much as they are, their, their pain exists. Definitely. npca.ca slash events to book tickets. That's one way. The other way is Niagara Folk Arts Festival slash festival. And uh, either way, you'll get tickets, uh, again, $25 per person or three, three events for $60. Emily, it's a fascinating event. I'm really excited for you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.